everybody on this. Sunday, June 26th, 2022. It's five something. From my backyard on the west coast of Florida. Now this is a Florida storm. It's raining like a bitch. Now this is what a Florida rainstorm looks like. Yes, rain. Have a great night. Much love from Florida. It's always good when it rains. <laughs> I love Sean. I love Sean too. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another Apple Juice for Two exclusive interview. Today we are joined by Charles, a local Charleston rapper, hip hop artist, and producer, Tyree Young. It's so good to be here with you guys. It's Thank you so much for joining us. I can dig it. Of course, we have Isaiah Allen and Brevin Stallings here. I'm always here. I don't care. Please I'm always here. Over here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's I'm on it. the couch. We talking about it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, Tyree, you just had a new album co- album come out, right? Season yeah, three. Season three. It's very exciting. You yeah. should go stream that anywhere you can stream albums and everything. Um. Today we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff. There's um a little bit of shit going on in the world of music with like a lot of albums being released and stuff this summer, especially hip hop albums. So we're going to get into that a little bit. Um, if you haven't followed us on social media, follow us at ajf2.pod. Is it right? ajf2.podcast? Yes. Podcast? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> ajf2.podcast. Yes, and the right. five stars everywhere and all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> and your mom. And Dunedin, Florida. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Your mom would love us. Um, well, Maybe. so do you mind if we play a little bit? Yeah, dude. That? I would love that. Okay, <laughs> sweet. So we listened to... It's today, and personally, our favorite is Gunfire. Oh, yeah, that's a banger. I made a way out of nothing, let's keep it legit. They say my money bring problems, I ain't seen that shit. Walk the city, dirty vans. So, this is a feature with um, J. Michael. Yeah, so J. Michael. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Is she yeah. a local? Yeah, he is. He plays in his band called Sandcastles, uh, Sandcastle, and you know, they're they're really good. I met him like probably five years ago uh we were both like hanging out people made music and then i, I was just like dude you got a talent like we, we're gonna make something dope we never made anything like that i put out until recently <laughs> which is how it goes um but the really really cool part about everything is that you know he's the type of person that you can go to and you can like say yo like do, 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 do. Uh-huh. And like, <laughs> he'll make that shit into like a progression. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nice. And like, I, I produce all the time, so it's like I love working with other producers because it just like it feels so relaxing to like not produce sometimes, like where I could yeah. just mm-hmm. rap. You know, like right, yeah, just like focus on the arrangements and how yeah. you sound stuff. And yeah. and that's what we did right there. And like that song just turned out to be like really really good because like we've worked together for some time and um. He's so experienced and he knows what he's doing, you know? Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, like, yeah, did you produce everything on the album or who produced you with so, overall in the thing? Yeah, I produce mainly everything except for Gunfire. Mm. Like everything. Okay. And I mean, I mean, I will probably, you know, I did do the bass arrangement, the beginning bass arrangement in Gunfire. Uh, but everything else was John Cantor, really. Uh-huh. Um, well, nice. Is that so? Did you guys work on that here in Charleston, or yeah. like, is there a studio? Space? Yeah, we we worked at that. We worked on that at his house. Literally, the the switch up in the beat. I was like, bro, like we need. I don't know. I think I was listening to some Pharrell shit that day. Nice. <laughs> um, and I just remember eliminate. You know, it, it does that drop like do 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 do. And I was like, bro, we need to do the same thing. Like boom 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 boom. And I was like, let's do that in this beat. And Trust then that's that how that shit just like worked and. Mm-hmm. We just ran with it. I was like, bro, I'm about to eat this shit up. Like, <laughs> give me five seconds, bro. I'll turn this bitch up. <laughs> Is that your favorite song on the album? Or do you have one? <sighs> yeah, like I feel like Gunfire at one point was my favorite song. Mm-hmm. I really love um, 24 Hours. And then I probably also love, um, uh, I'm blinking on y'all. I'm so sorry. I apologize. But I, I also I love, uh, I kept the score. That song just more so because it like means a lot to me. Mm. And Gunfire is just more of like, I really want to show people that like, 
I want to showcase that, like, you know, I can be a formidable foe when it comes to, you know, hard hitting beats because, like, I mm-hmm. usually don't do that shit. You know, I have yeah. like a, a alternative trap style. You know, mm-hmm. I don't have yeah, like a traditional trap style. Right. I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, so that one other song, Body LNG or yeah. Language, is that what yeah, that's Body that Language? Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. I just didn't want to change it up. <laughs> when you save shit, cool. sometimes you just save it as random shit. Oh yeah. Hundred percent feel that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so you did that with Sydney Blackwell. Yeah, yeah. How, what was that like working with her? Uh, so that's, I wrote that song two years ago when Never Season 2 came out, actually. Mm-hmm. It was just that first half. And then... Um, Which is I, interesting because it's like starkly different stylistically than yes. the whole album mm-hmm. and changes. Yeah. And that was kind of like the whole purpose. The whole purpose of the music that I create is that is alternative experiment rap. Mm-hmm. And it has to feature like, subtle elements of trap but also i want to give people a stylistic approach to like music like let let me put my own like touch on this like and what is that touch like so when we when i originally wrote body language it was like supposed to be an alternative song like full and full through Mm -hmm. and then i was like i'm losing myself in this music right now let me add the trap element to it Mm -hmm. and the pad is the only thing in that song that's consistent with the whole entire Mm -hmm. song okay if you listen through um it's like when it comes to creating experimental music, there has to be one main thing that stays the same. For them to hang on to. For you to hang on to mentally, because everything else is changing so much that you can't hang on to it. Uh-huh. So you're going to get upset when you listen to the shit. You're going to be like, why did you do that? Like, you should have kept it like this. Mm. So finding that one thing that people can like hang on to every single time, like it really matters, you know? And that's what I did with Body Language. And then I actually wrote the, the original lyrics for it. Our friend uh, passed away like before I wrote to it, and I just like kind of had a lot of inspiration going. Um, and I called Sydney because she's like my little sister. She's from Florence, where I'm from, and I was like, "Bro, you got to hop on this show." Yeah, out. nice. You know. So is that what it's about? Your friend passing? Yeah, or? yeah. I mean, well, it's not about my friend passing, but she kind of gave me the inspiration to really like go for it. Go for it you yeah. know, mm-hmm. um, the whole thing about the album is is that I wanted to make sure I try to keep. I try to have all my friends on my shit, you know? Oh, nice, yeah. Like, in certain in certain areas, certain key, spe- like, aspects, I want to have a homie on the shit. So, for, and I did songs with everybody. There's a lot of songs that people haven't heard with other people on them. But the main thing for me is, like, hey, like, you know, if I know you can sing, um, I'm going to call you up and be like, yo, uh, Isaiah, you trying to hop on this shit you know you're trying to you know you know what i'm saying like yeah, yeah, man, even if yeah, it's something yeah. in the background you know like <laughs> yeah man yeah, yeah. exactly uh, schoolboy q did that he i don't know if you ever seen if, if you ever been a schoolboy q show before mm-hmm. whenever he dropped blank faces he had his homie from um from out out where the fuck he's from he's from, he's from i think he's from somewhere in california he's from somewhere in california but you know because him and him and uh kendrick yeah back. he's not from compton but he's from another suburb out right. there and he brought his homie on stage. Mm. And if you listen to the album, you can hear that same dude. I forget his name, but he's on the project. You know? Oh, nice. Mm. So he just brought him up with him. Yeah. As much as he could. And he put, yeah, you know, and you need to do that with your homies. Like, yeah, that's yeah. there's not a lot of culture like that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, well, so speaking of that, like, I saw that it's on Spotify listed as Charleston um, Sound Collective or yeah, Collective yeah. Sound Charleston. <laughs> what what is that? <laughs> That's is this it? right here, the collective. Oh, nice. Song. That's cool. <laughs> Tell us yeah, about yeah. that. Oh, yeah. So the whole idea of this is that I wanted to start a clothing line oh, that nice. also reflects a record label in the future, and also reflects like this whole thing I want to create, which is the collective collective perception, which is a unit of artists and creators who all you know work together to create shit mm-hmm. you know they're there i keep saying shit i'm sorry but, <laughs> we don't fuck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. but they they work they work we all work together to create art and we all get paid off of it you know right and you know it's kind of like a unit thing where you know say you guys might if you were in a collective perception you might be working on this podcast every day but you would get together with me to do some shit like whether that's a video production or something mm-hmm. like that like it's mm-hmm. like we all work together. We all make money. Like an ecosystem yeah, kind you know? of, you know, yeah. Yeah, and whenever I get paid, you get paid, mm-hmm. and then that gives you the opportunity to go focus on doing your solo project. Mm-hmm. Which and then we probably get you on type shit. Yeah, yeah. that's 
that's how you got it. And do the it. world goes round. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> well, that's cool. So, do you have any more shirts? Or th- I do. I do. I took a little break from producing the shirts just because I was so focused on season three. Yeah, of course. And right, I was that. just like, I was doing all my video <laughs> content, editing everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I can't do everything yet. Like right now, like yeah. you know, I, I just right. gotta, I gotta segment everything. So it's kind of like falling back, but t-shirts are still for sale. Nice. Okay, yeah. where can and you get them? Yeah, you did do a couple of music videos for the album, right? Yes, yes, I did. Um, they're all up, and I did. I do this thing called the office sessions, which is like live performance mm-hmm. like oh, videos. Nice. It's actually like a hundred percent live performance. Like that's cool. There's not. That's not a backing track. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Word. That's awesome. Um. So in general, if were there like any specific inspirations for this album stylistically, like maybe from an artist or something, or Maybe who inspires uh, you just in general uh, throughout your musical that, journey? That's been the hardest question for me to answer mm. recently mm-hmm. because mm. when <laughs> 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 no, for real, because like I always think about it. I'm like, damn, like who, who really, uh, you know, that, that I, it, what, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, it's like, damn, I, I know, listen I feel to that, so yeah. much shit, you know, like uh, I listen right. to so much music. It was like. I'm 27 right now. I've been making music since I was 16. It's almost to the point where it's like, if I hear something that I like, I might take some some keynotes from it mm. and like use it. But for the most part, I'm really trying to create my own thing right now. Yeah, yeah. And it's at, some people may say, "Damn, that's a cop out or whatever," but really, it's just wow. it's just fact. Like, yeah. Well, because the whole genre thing is kind of there's so many issues with it anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to, but it, like it makes sense to have i guess some sort of genre classification to be able to talk about things Mm -hmm. in like generalized senses but yeah trying to pigeonhole like when people ask you like what genre are you you're like i mean it's a little bit of everything especially if you have listen to it yeah yeah exactly and then you can decide (laughs) exactly yeah um well so my favorite part of it i think was the lyrics and all of it Mm -hmm. um i thought that it struck me as a like probably the best part of it at least to me yeah have you great. always been writing i've always or? been writing nice like for a long time and i'm not i never say i'll be like you know i'm not kendrick fucking lamar but <laughs> i'm uh i'm tyree young and uh <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah I, I i write the i write in a way that's informative but also catchy mm-hmm. and that's what i try to do the most is like how can i give you some like how can i give you a little bit of j cole with a lot of with a lot of uh who's a good person for me to say with maybe Kodak Black, you know, I don't, I don't want to say Kodak Black. That that, that mm-hmm. stylistically probably isn't the right choice. But you gonna say I'm trying to right. go for like a Playboy or Playboy Cardi. If Playboy Cardi rapped like J. Cole, like what the hell would you think? You know, like what would that be like? <laughs> yeah. Like but yeah. But more be more audible sound. Chat. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> I think Drake does a good job of that though. Drake does a good job of taking a style. And like making it informative. Before you finish your thought, yeah, I hate to interject, but have you listened to Drake's most recent album? Oh yeah, fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about it? Here's because... my here's my take on it. Okay, what's up? And if you listen to some of my music, I do the same exact shit. There's a lot of house element, and well, not on this album that much. Mm-hmm. On a lot of my earlier projects, there's a lot of house elements on it. The thing is, with Drake is, is that. It was really refreshing to hear him sing again, mm-hmm. like he did on his earlier projects. But right. the, I just felt like it wasn't him, you know. Really, yeah. I just that's what I that's honestly what I felt like. Mm-hmm. It was like he it probably just, wasn't behind any of the tracks, like producing it wise or something. Yeah, I mean, he definitely so. wasn't. But like, it's it gets to a place to where like the last song on the album felt like Drake. Now, it's yeah. like I'm an OG 21, now. Yeah, Twenty One Savage and. Yeah. yeah, I've heard the name of the song, but yeah. Uh, Jimmy Cooks. That's what it was, yeah. it was. That song is really, really good, But every and I like calling my name, but like when you really listen to the project as a whole, you're like, I, I feel like you get to a place with certain artists where it's like, where is your progression? I think one thing we lack <laughs> yeah. with Drake is like, I remember Drake saying, I'm going to give like the culture something new next year or whatever, like, and that was like uh-huh. views or some shit, or mm-hmm. maybe not views, but uh, the last song where he was dissing uh, Tyga, on uh if you're reading this oh was oh, no, i was reading if you're reading this is uh, too late yeah on that album he said that shit and i was like damn drake's gonna talk about some real shit mm. 
But then I'm like, <laughs> you know, Drake never <laughs> did that. Drake never talked about real shit. Like, it's a house music album. Yeah, yeah. He's never really like he hasn't really grown as an artist. Yeah, basically. yeah. It's like you can listen to a lot of music, but mm-hmm. what you're really listening for is on every album. You want there to be a really hard song. Right. You want there to be a really inspirational song. You want there to be a love song. You want there to be some other stuff. Like that is a typical project that you mm-hmm. want and. Mm-hmm. You know, when you look at a painting on a wall, you're dissecting it. You know, look at what is that Squidward right there? Yeah, I'm gonna exactly. dissect Squidward, this Squidward <laughs> painting, oh, dude. and try to figure out why it's yeah. good. You know, and I, I do think, it every night. I think that's what hip hop needs right now. It needs like people to say, "All right, fuck this." Like, I know I'm gonna send this into Spotify. It probably won't get picked up on a playlist mm-hmm. because it's not what you want to hear right now. And I think Drake did a good job of that. We didn't. We didn't necessarily think he would come out with that. The only problem is, is that we're we're looking and imagining for him to come out with something else. You know, mm-hmm. hot Besides take that. about Drake. I think that in his more recent albums, he's uh, carried in his features, especially uh, yeah. The, the most recent album, I, for, I keep on forgetting the name of that album, but it seemed like the majority of his songs that I actually kind of liked. Were carried by features. Yeah, the one with the emojis. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. The, uh, I forgot. Lover Boy, Certified Lover Boy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That it, shit was, was, it was. It was, it was very. It's pretty much carried. I think by I listened to that once and yeah. then really never listened to it again. <laughs> yeah, and then I listened to obviously his like quote unquote house music album. The yeah. only song I don't I don't want to consider it a house music album, but the only like house song I would say yeah. was Massive. Massive was the oh, only yeah, was, only song yeah. I'm like okay like I can get behind this yeah and then it's ironic because I was talking to I'm sure you know do you know That's DJ great. Marco Millie Millie Marco I think so. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> he me and him like talked a little bit about it and he was like I hate it but he it's funny because yeah. he DJed uh, he played um Massive and I'm like really dude yeah and then on the note of house music. Beyonce just released a, like maybe less than a week ago a, like a house a house music song like a house music mm. style song and that shit hit it's and a, I think it, it, it hit it, I it, think that's because you expect that from Beyonce though yeah like you can expect that type of music from Beyonce but you can't expect that from Drake see this is why I don't and go to therapy it, <laughs> <laughs> and if he gives you that if he gives you that the whole entire album you're gonna be like damn like mm-hmm. this is good but I was no, no. <laughs> honestly i feel like i just beyonce is in a whole other level than someone true. like drake true and, you know what i mean like yeah. yeah when i heard that song i was like whoa but i think it's interesting yeah. how like i don't know at least for this moment there a lot of people are just into house music all of a sudden yeah. again yeah. yeah there was just high tide uh, speaking of house music and people are like oh yeah i like house music now yeah like, oh, I really don't i've seen a lot of people posting me like <laughs> this is actually good house music. And they'll yeah. post like the new Beyonce song. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, nah, there's so much more. Yeah. What about like his UK drill stuff? I love that shit. Yeah. It's, I, he oh, did oh, a pretty oh, good oh, job, oh, I think, oh, with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He does a good <laughs> job of emulating styles. And he did, he to me, this is my thing. I, he did a great job on this project of emulating another style. I just don't think it was like what I wanted to hear mm-hmm. from Drake. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with the pro. Like to me, it's a good project. What, what are you waiting for? Yeah. Um, what, what do you, do you think would be the coolest Drake? thing Drake could do? Mm-hmm. I think the coolest thing Symphony that Drake orchestra. could do, and Drake's probably going to hear this one day, y'all, because you know I'm going to um, blow up. But <laughs> we'll, we'll be sending this straight to his. Yeah. Uh, his, yeah. His I, team. I think the one thing that Drake could possibly do that would really change the way I look at him is like, if he was on some like, some true inspirational i don't know like what could he talk about that I he know, hasn't yeah, well, talked about <laughs> what yeah. do we need from drake does the world need anything from drake <laughs> i feel like drake i feel like drake could possibly talk about like what's going on in the streets from like a standpoint of like fighting the power and shit like, oh yeah from a lot of other artists of his caliber mm-hmm. do you smoke but like you know at the same time it's like fuck like what do i want there comes a time yeah, where right. your artist starts to that progression so stalls out you know? Exactly, yeah. And it's like, damn, what's going on? Where he just like stays stagnant and you don't wanna you don't wanna hear that. A lot of people get upset yeah. when an artist like tries to branch out initially, but yeah. then if it's like good, then it ages like a fine wine. Yeah. Um It's like Kid Cudi did that with that raging mm. bullet. So what was that? What was what project was that? that was, yeah, I don't know. That was a long time ago, I can tell you that. But <laughs> that was a long time ago. Who's your favorite rapper? My favorite rapper. Who's your favorite rapper? <laughs> rapper? You like rapping? Who's your favorite uh, rapper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have one. If and I, I have one. Yeah. If you after you answer that, which after you answer the favorite rapper, what's your favorite style of rap after? 
Because we're on the topic of rap. Cameron, you asked me a question too. My, my favorite <laughs> rapper. See, y'all keep asking me what my favorite genre is, my favorite rapper. Uh, What's your favorite? My, okay. favorite your rapper, my favorite rapper when I was a kid though was Kanye. I don't, oh, I don't, I don't okay. know if I have a. It sucks for me to say that because I'm like, I don't know if I have a favorite rapper anymore because like, yeah, it's no, I mean, it's no, a hard question. Like, you know, like yeah. I feel like my. I like my friends' music more than I like mm -hmm. most. That, I mean, music, I think that's you know? a valid answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you know, there's that's people. the nice part about having talented friends. Yeah, is that you have music to listen yeah. to, podcasts to listen yeah. to, like actually good music. shirts to wear, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. You just get it from your friends. Who's your least favorite rapper? Huh, my least favorite rapper right now. Let's I guess see. that would have to be like someone big. Because if it's your friend, then. <laughs> yeah, it's friend. not your friend. Yeah, how do you feel <laughs> yeah. about Logic? I used to like Logic, and then I heard his first mainstream out his first mainstream album, and one of the songs sounded like Kendrick Lamar's "Singing Me I'm Dying" uh, <laughs> song, and and I was like, this which is a, kind of a freak out. I was like, this beat is exactly the same to some extent. Yeah, really, that's like, crazy. Wait, I gotta pull yeah, this up. Yeah, well, which album was that? That was the first Logic album. Logic that 